being able to do that? Hey everybody, it is Friday. Uh, we're about to have some lunch here. Uh, I am live from the PDCA Residential Forum. It's a group of probably, what, 60, 70? 60 to 70. Right 60 now. to yep. 70 residential house painting business entrepreneurs from uh, US, Canada, Mexico, North America right. deal. And I am here with the Steve Skodak. He is the director of the PDCA National and uh, a guy that I've got to get to know over the last couple of years. And he is a super high level thinker and he is here because he uh, he let me know about some really cool things that the PDCA is going to be doing this year. So Steve, yeah, we're what? we're really excited. We have um, we're in the midst of a partnership that we've developed that will uh, put a standardized onboarding uh, program into uh, any high school, trade school, community college and uh, to work program in the nation that wants it at free of charge to them. Mm -hmm. And this partnership is very exciting for us and we're looking, um, the parent company does, um, they do exploration of trades and as an offshoot of that, we'll be doing the trade specific work for, uh, for onboarding painters and looking, nice. at, looking at trade best practice. In addition to that, we're looking um, heavily right now into uh, an apprenticeship program that we can make available and have a structured program that then helps people move through their career uh, as a painter um, showing proficiency in various jobs. And in addition to that, we are also looking at um, association health plans. Oh. So uh, there was recent uh, Department um, of Labor recently released their new rulings on uh, group uh, healthcare options, and we are in the process of uh, exploring and looking at the the various benefits and um, and risks associated with it. So this new ruling would allow trade associations to be able to negotiate the group insurance for everybody who's out there. And so for the 310,000 paint contractors out there. Uh, we would have the option to provide group insurance or at least an avenue to negotiate uh, on their behalf. So, so that's we're very excited. So that's that. amazing. So instead of like huge. me being a a group of one trying to negotiate with right. these monster health insurance companies, we would all band together and, yes. and get a group rate. Yes. That yeah. would be very interesting. It, it, would, <laughs> it would be very helpful. And we have, yes. <laughs> and, and the, um, the, the recent ruling by uh, Department of Labor has now um, modified so that association health plan plans can include owner operators because uh, in our industry the average paint shop is 1.5 people yep. I know how do you deal with the half but exactly it's, yeah, yeah 1.5 but um, owner operators have always been an issue with association health plans and now they have made a determination that that uh, owner operator can be counted as the employee and would thus qualify to be in an association health plan so more to come on that um, and we're, again, thrilled about having this onboarding program be available to all the trade schools, the high schools, um, and there'll be more coming out uh, from us as that relationship develops. So it's it's super interesting to hear all that because us poor schlubs that are in the field, I'm also here with Nick LaGrasso, the up, Nick guys? LaGrasso. The. Uh, everybody loves Nick LaGrasso. Oh um, boy. So us schlubs in the field still, we're feeling that there, there are some truths. There is not enough people to work for our companies, and there's way too much work to go around right, right now. Right. And so that initiative would, and your initiatives, would be super helpful in finding people, um, sort of uh, acclimatizing them to our trade, right. and then making them available. Well, we have to entice, we have to do a much, much better job in the trades at, um, at helping people explore various parts of the trade. Yeah. So someone comes into painting and they decide, you know, uh, I'm not really that good a painter, or I, I don't really enjoy doing that. We need to be much better at trying to place them in another trade. Mm, yep, and same yep. with the other trades, is we all need to be working together to say, yes, this person has a desire uh, perhaps to work in the industry, but you know, ours may not be the best fit for them. But we also need the other trades to also be talking, um, talking more broadly about um, what are the options within the industry as a yeah. whole. So it's that whole cooperation thing. We're, it is. We're cooperating. We're a little bit competition, but together yeah. we're better, right? Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> That's so awesome. There's only so far efficiencies can go in what you're doing and improvements in the product to cut time. Um, but we certainly want to make sure that um, that painting shows up one on the trade sheet, not on the skilled labor side. Yep. Yep. 
and we want there to be a differential between those people who are performing at this level and the people here and we're gonna we're gonna start creating more and more of those distinctions within the painting industry so that you can set yourself apart very nice so uh, we're also here with Nick Lagrasso, like I said. What's up, Facebook land? So what did we talk about this morning in our education sessions as a group? Oh, man, we talked about customer service. Customer service, yep, that was um, a big one. What to do before, during, and after the sale, right? Yep. Uh, kind of refreshed us all on how we're supposed to uh, treat our clients and better ways to treat clients. What else did we talk Some about? Some pretty good novel we ideas. We talked about millennials. Yep. Oh, heavy Those millennials. crazy millennials and how yep. to deal with them and how we're all going to have to employ them. And eventually, they might even be our bosses. I know, right? They're going to be our clients too, Nick. They, they will definitely be. And, and that's the one thing that you don't always hear. Like, we're always saying, we're so concerned with finding, finding um, employees right now. So the work is there. The economy is good. But um, we we're really have sort of missed the part about... We're going to be working for millennials, all of us. We could be, absolutely. <laughs> and we probably we, are right now, and we will in the next 20 absolutely. years. <laughs> no, we will. And then we also talked about culture, which I thought was was great. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, we're here. Oh, at, yeah, Rick Holtz, uh, who owns a uh, yeah, 60 Sun, man shop. A 60 man shop. And he, it was so interesting to talk about craftsmanship is a culture builder. Our quality, we're proud of what we do. That's right. His, his care about his clients, the certain awards for innovation and reliability he gives people. And to hear somebody with a 60-man outfit, which you would think might have the tendency to be this cold-hearted machine of a thing, it's like he is, he's in the people business. <laughs> and he truly loves his employees. Oh, you can tell. I mean, tell, you can yeah. tell. It's, yep. uh, I think I had the conversation yesterday with uh, Mike Katunas and Annie Newton, uh, yep. where I was like, you know, part of what drives me to get up every day is because my employees, I think they're fantastic. It's not all about the dollar, because I understand without them, uh, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just a one-man no, no, show, and there's nothing wrong with that, but and, it and gets your life, tiring. Your life so. is happy or sad based on the people you put around you. That's right. So I've, I've slowly realized, like, the more we do this, I really realize that we're in the we are really in like servicing people business. Like, you know, there's there's so many, it, our industry is so people heavy. There's us, which is a wild variable. There's our employees and apprentices, wild variable. And then there's our clients, wild variable. I mean, the only things we can guarantee is that there's gonna be paint. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's Everything right. Everything else is a wild card, really. It sure is, yeah. <laughs> so it's amazing. So it's great to hear that, uh, you know, even even a seasoned vet like you in the in the industry is doing really good things. We're still taking stuff away every day, no Absolutely. matter what. And it's, just, it's also just a good refocus, uh, refresh, and recharge the batteries. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go do this a little bit better than yep. I did uh, first half. So it, It's always, at every event I go with you two, I somehow always hear you say, that stuff like this makes you want to be a painter. Makes again. me want to be a painter time, for you know? another year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. So it's just like it's it's like skipping a rock across the lake. It's from event to event to event. You know I what love I mean? That. Because it's uh, otherwise it's kind of the same thing over and over. But to get around you guys, guys like Mr. Slavic here with fresh ideas, and yeah. um, and then there's kind of the more uh, I don't know, like Mark Poulos, like what a crazy Mr. Customer Service guy. Dude. I thought I was doing it well, and then he's like, no, we do. 50 other things so yeah you get around a guy like mark uh, and it's like yeah my business is horrible <laughs> yeah, like, uh, maybe i'm just a rookie still but exactly no, it's, it, yeah. it's really nice and i think that's what's uh, awesome about pdca is you get around and it's just the camaraderie and this is a real industry it's not just a bunch of guys on ladders it's uh you know we're yep. here we're here for all of us and uh what's interesting to me is that um you would think that a lot of these discussions would be focused around bottom line profit, generating revenue, which is like important. That. We 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 do we do discuss that, but only in the guise of all that will happen as an afterthought. Of if you take care of people, you take care of your people, you take care of your clients, and it's ama I think I think our clients, if they all watch this or sat in on these sessions, they would be so surprised how much we talk about trying to make them happy people. Yeah, you know, we don't really amazing. talk about paint a whole lot, and we don't talk about money a whole Which lot. Which I'm super disappointed. We could use a little more primer talk. We could. We could, and, and I know you're we'll a big coatings that for fan Expo. too. Okay. Hey, last night yeah. when we were sitting out on the veranda, scrub tests came up between got, you and it me. Got, it got geeky. Yeah, it got geeky, it and I like that stuff. But we have to break away from the crowd to get that stuff done. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Craftsmanship. That's like pencil hardness. Is. I'm in I, on you this. heard that across the room. Yeah. You're like, I'm in. <laughs> pencil hardness. Let's talk about pencil hardness. So. I love it. So, all right, we're going to go get some lunch, guys. Thank you, everybody.
Mr. Skodak, the big thinker, the leader of this whole thing. Uh, can't wait to see what comes of all this this next year. This is going to be an exciting year, not only for all our businesses. The economy is good. It lets us um, do some very flexible, innovative things uh, because the, uh, the market is good. And then uh, we have good trade groups like this that are helping us out. So uh, everybody, we're going to get some lunch. Take care, and I'll do some live later. Also, 5 p.m. tonight. Um, we are doing Ask a Painter Live, and I'll have Archie Bartell from Sherwin here, uh, the big uh, marketing uh, market muck. Dude, Ar Archie got into our conversation of pencil hardness and scrub yeah, test last night. So yeah. Archie is a big level thinker too. He also can get down and dirty with Primer Talk. So I, I like good. that guy. So uh, thanks, everyone. Talk to you later.